This footage of a helicopter crash was taken by local video makers at an air show in Fakuori Masterton in 1986. Fortunately, the pilot and bystanders weren't hurt. You got this all on there. Um, will that be available to X investigation? One of the cameramen on that day was Fred Holloway, and I'm hoping he can help me with something. And what I'm looking for is in my garage. I have no idea where it is. It's a box of old film, 16mm and Super 8, and it's here somewhere. Two lawnmowers. I found it. Here it is. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Woohoo! This is the one! Whoops. Let's see. These are a load of old films that belong to my partner from her nana. And I have no idea what is on them. Oh. I've heard that film buff Fred Holloway has a setup that will help convert these old films. Fred lives in a secluded spot in Biddeford, a small hamlet 15 kilometres from Masterton. Kind of like a farm. Got my box of film and hopefully Fred's in. He's not in. He must be over there in his workshop. There he is. Hello, Fred. How are you? Oh, what's that? <laughs> Gee, that's lovely. What's that? It's a little camera. Really? Yeah. That's a cracker, isn't it? I brought you something, Fred. Oh, yeah, what? Oh, that's nice. It gives me a lot of heart to see these people's other visions. At a sprightly 93 years old, Fred has been making films of local people and events since he retired as a bailiff in 1988. Before he gets to work converting my old films, he's got some of his own to show me. I'm going to tell them point blank that their proposals are totally unacceptable. One film made in 1991 documented the fight to save the old Masterton Hospital from being shut down by the health authorities based in Wellington. And the whole community is behind us in saying that. 16,000 worried and angry people turned up at the hospital to show their displeasure, joining hands around the building in a sign of solidarity against the closure. Thousands of them came from all over, not just from Masterton, from way out in the country. Featherston, Martinborough, because they wanted a hospital here. You couldn't go anywhere else, it's too far to go to Palmerston North. That's 90 odd, 90 odd miles or something. The men are there by the entrance to the hospital. And everybody that came here, they were shouting and everything. And they said, we're going to do something about this. Stand up, we'll do something about it. We're not going to let it happen. And Fred was there, capturing all the action as the fight was taken to the town hall. And I had to be prayed there outside, telling the mayor they've got to do something about it. We're not going to let them get rid of our hospital and not get a new one. So he then relented and joined them. With support growing within Wairarapa, the decision was made to head to the capital. A train was decked out in a banner and 1,000 people crammed into the carriages. The train was full. When you left Masterton, it filled up in Carleton. Next one, next one, right the way down. People were standing all the way down. I had to sit in, the, in between the two carriages on the floor. With its final stop at Wellington, protesters piled out 
and a cardboard box holding a petition with over 22,000 signatures was then taken on to Parliament. They streamed out of there and I stood there and I filmed them coming out of the station in swarms, just swarms. It was just like a big wave of people walking up, no, no traffic. Joining the protesters was another thousand who had driven in a convoy over the Rimatucker Hill. And as soon as we got to Parliament, I dashed up the steps and all the MPs were waiting on the outside Parliament and boy did they give them what hole. And they were shouting and you do this, you're not doing much for us and so forth. It's all on the camera, all on it. And it was wonderful. This popular resistance forced the government to finally change their mind and even led to a new hospital being built for the people of Wairarapa in 2005. Over the years, Fred has made more than 100 films for the local community, including the popular sport of marching girls. When ancient man first fell in line and stepped out together, marching was born. Made in 1972, this was one of the first colour films shot for television in New Zealand on 16mm film. It featured one particularly successful marching troupe from Greytown. One of the girls entered the competition and found herself elected Miss Greytown. In addition to a marching demonstration and display, the girls sell raffle tickets and help generally. Well, most of the time. I followed them all around where they went. They had these meetings and they're going to have people come in from all over the country and they get together and do a weekend with marching. The most colourful part of the whole programme is the serpentine. Purely for the entertainment of the spectators, it's always held with numerous variations. And that's what I used to do. So I follow them all the way round for that day. And then we started travelling out a bit further. We used our own cars or, or we used to hire a bus. And then one day they, they wanted to go up to Auckland because they were in the finals. Went all the way up to Auckland in the blue bus and we arrived there. And they went and did the, what they had to do on the park. For 16 months, Fred was there to capture all the moments including when things got a little too hot under the collar. Invariably there are faintings, especially in warm weather. Sometimes one girl sets off others in the team, and as many as five faintings have been recorded in the same team. But the marching must go on, and the remaining team members complete the exercise. Often there's no time for stretches and the girls are hurried off in blankets to avoid further disruption of the team continuing the contest. Another of Fred's films covered a version of the Olympics on four wheels. The World Speed Skating Championships held in Masterton in 1980. On behalf of the committee, I would like to welcome you here today. 1980s, roller skating. Parade starts with all their flags, introducing them to all the people that were sat there watching. And for about three or four days, we were doing each individual run of the one taking part. Some would win, some would lose. And the winners were brought back again to fight again. Thousands of people have come every time to watch each race and some of them got pushed and pushed and pushed and like, you know, not very good comradeship. That was the Italian. Yeah, they were really bad. Oh, they were rough. They'd get behind them and pull their jersey over them. Over the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was also off the track that Fred was capturing all the drama before the medals were handed out. And bronze to Hermes Fossi, Italy. Now declare the World Race Speed Championship officially closed.
Fred's association with all things celluloid goes back a long way. When I was six years old, my dad came home with a little hand-driven projector. And I used to go under the curtains that were over the table in the living room, and so I used to enjoy myself underneath the table with all the curtains down the side, nobody could see me, because they didn't have electricity, it was just a bulb from batteries. And that's how I turned into a cinema. As a young man, Fred went on to work as a projectionist in Blackpool, England, learning the craft of showing and repairing film. After emigrating to New Zealand in 1969 and deciding he didn't quite like farm work, Fred put his projection skills to good use at Masterton State and Regent movie houses. Fred also set up a drive-in movie theatre in his backyard paddock all at no charge. These days, Fred restricts his viewings to his own personal cinema, converted from the original Biddeford Telephone Exchange. This is my cinema. My little own little cinema, come on in. With its 12 comfy seats and Fred's ingenious opening curtain setup, it's a truly unique experience. Where do we get the peanuts? Please? A week after filming with Fred, the old films I'd left him were now ready to view. It was time for the grand premiere of these mysterious memories of my partner's Nana in Fred's personal cinema. We're back at Fred's place with my family. Cool. Excited. I don't know what are on these films and yeah. I'll put your DVD in, home movie. The first reel seemed to be of somewhere in the Far East, perhaps Vietnam or Malaysia. It's like so out of focus and we don't quite know what we're looking at most of the time. And then a clue, Jurong Falls. It was Singapore. There she is there, there's Nana. In the blue. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And there's my dad. Wow. Oh, that's my dad. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cry. And there's my mum. Look at mum, she looks She's so young. Oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. That was good. Oh, that was more than I expected it was going to be. That's brilliant. Thank you, Fred, for a stunning day at the movies. It just shows moving images from the past are poignant reminders of who we are and just where we came from. Phil Stebbing, Local Focus. Well, thanks for calling. Very lovely to see you again.